Well, because it's day one out here, I forgot the uh, mic attachment, so the audio is a little bit crummy. That's that's this guy's fault. So we are here just outside of Kansas City, and um, I was contacted by a viewer who had some bikes. So we're here checking a few out. We're gonna take at least four home, which is why we have the trailer today. So we rented this thing using Seth's truck and. He's getting all excited about a couple things, aren't you? I got some things that I want, that I don't need, but I really want. Got BRZ 400 back there. Got a Honda. Well, I guess we got a Beamer right there. Yeah, BMW F800. Yeah. You know, there's a 929. So, I do know we are gonna pick up this uh, CB450 right here. We're gonna get this Honda Hawk. Hawk, I don't know why I called it that, a dream this triumph and then there is a bmw r100 right there so there's a few other things we're going to kind of comb this pile and see what we need you don't need that what do you mean of course i need it no i meant just the gauge oh well no those are optional so this is a Ducati, I'm assuming a monster or something like that. I can't tell at this point. This is a CBR or something, something. 600 F4i. 600 F4i. BMW R100. DRZ 400. I think the uh, frame said SM, so the Supermoto. Yeah. I want to say this is a BSA. I'm really unsure but it's like you know 20% different than a Triumph so I think it's a BSA look at those bars oh yeah the way they come straight back there. them rabbits they're a little tweaked V-Star this is pretty cool this is actually a I think it's an old iron head uh, sporty with a Yamaha XS 750 tank it's kind of a cafe we got another Ducati here all kinds of stuff. It was a job. That was a chore. Coming away with a CBR 600 F3 front end, a potentially Triumph Trophy 500, I don't know. Beats me. BMW 100 or R100 slash five. This thing is really tweaked. Front end's completely tweaked, swing arm's bent. We have a CBR 929 Hornet, CB450. Uh, this thing we gotta figure out. It's before, looking very unique. Before the comment section tells you apart, it's actually a 900 Hornet. I don't care. <laughs> well, I care, DJ. He cares. <laughs> and we have a some kind of Ducati chassis, DRZ 400 SM, and then a Honda Dream. So, definitely a few bikes today. What is this, eight total? I stopped counting at four. I mean, I can only count to six, so it, we lost count at this point, so I don't know. This might be the most we've got. Definitely the most expensive haul, but uh, we do appreciate the deal we got on these things, and it is helping out a person for a tragic uh, tragic scenario, but you know, we won't get into that. So off to the shop we go. We got three and a half hours to drive. I 
is pushing 9.30. We are about 30 minutes from home, maybe 40 minutes. Everything's looking good. This bike came loose and uh, come to find out this is actually a Norton. I don't know what model yet, but pretty damn cool. Looks incredibly bad, but still cool. Next day, we never really kind of went over some of the things we got. So this is Seth's uh, new to him DRZ 400 SM, so the supermoto version. So it has a nice Excel wheel on it. Um, the engine, it's got like a you know broken side cover on the right side. Seats in good shape. Missing a front end, obviously, but the bars are there, and it's, you know it's a good parts bike. But you're working on a, a plan to maybe make it run again, right? Yeah, I got a. Got a potential trade in the in the mix. Might make something happen. We'll see what comes of it, though. Yeah, and that trade includes the other bike you got from last night. Yeah. So as you guys saw yesterday, CBR 900 slash 919 Hornet. So it's got that really funky shaped frame on this one. Overall, this thing looks like it's really complete and in damn decent shape. It's not bad. It's all there pretty much, besides obviously a tank and a seat. But. Yeah. So it would be really cool if you could get this thing to like crank over and maybe even run. So yeah. it needs fuel obviously, so we got the fuel rail there and needs power to the right places that need power. It needs fuel pump. But can't really find a tank for it locally yet. Not yet. Working on it. And beyond that, you guys, we mentioned that Ducati chassis. So this is the specimen and it's a monster what year i think it's like an early 2000s like 98 to 01 900 monster okay something like that so running gear is there but we really picked this up because uh he spotted all the owens stuff so really good rear shock and uh up front it has a full shower like really nice set up the whole fork like you know steering stabilizer so you're just going to be reselling this stuff oh yeah i mean that's all this is really for you know pretty much i don't have any intentions of using it for myself as it's you know pass it on to the next guy yeah someone that'll actually use it i think the front end what was it off of like mm. guessing it was engineered for ducatis i can't remember what series like a 916 or something like that yeah um, but yeah those were custom run for those yeah and it's still got the computer and it even has the throttle bodies on it so that's cool but i'm thinking i really want this frame i want to do a little furniture project with that i think that'd be cool so anyway yeah that's kind of the uh the gist of the haul so definitely have some interesting stuff while i still had the trailer rented i wanted to see how my maverick did pulling something so we drove over 170 miles to pick up a compressor from a friend that's really going to help in the shop for vapor honing and other stuff. Okay, well we just got this compressor. It is gig gigantic. So we had four guys helping just kind of slide it onto the trailer, but we've got this ramp. It's really tricky. So I have a big old piece of plastic. All right. We got a hole drilled in it, a big hook. We have a V-Strom back there, and I think what we're going to do is put the air compressor on here, put two straps to the same hook point, and then we're just going to drag it up with like four of us. Makes sense to me. Yeah. That's how they built the pyramids. Okay. 
strap is hooked to the ramp. The other end of the strap is hooked into this piece of plastic, drill the hole, and we have two straps which were used to drag the compressor onto the platform. So this keeps it square. And if we're pulling from that side and pulling from that side, there's not gonna be any tension in the middle of the plastic keeping it from bending. So now I'm gonna pull the truck forward so we can slide this towards the end, which we may not need. We might just be able to just lift that up real quick and pull it ourselves. I was thinking we should just do that. Yeah, that sounds safer. Okay. What if I pulled on it while you stabilize? Yeah, yeah it probably would be easier than we think. Oh yeah, we don't need that truck. You're just about to the ramp. Okay. Right there. I'm just barely pushing it. Okay. Okay. supposed to be kind of grippy right here. Whoops. Okay. Okay, that actually moved really easy. So the hook can sit in this channel and just guide itself all the way up. It probably would be smart to get the other guys just to make sure it doesn't fall. Definitely. So far, so good. Okay, this is where it should get serious. Well, as you know, the compressor's in here, so now that we have a moment, let's kind of go over some of these bikes we got. So this is a Dream 150. In the original photos, I kind of thought it was a Dream 305 because I didn't even know they made a 150, but pretty cute little guy. It's in pretty darn good shape. It's really complete. It has its issues, but the paint's faded and stuff. I think it'll come back. But both carbs on here, it has coils. It's, like I said, really, really complete. Um, one cool detail though, I thought this was the pivot for the seat. Nope. This is an air pump. How freaking cool is that? So Seth and I just got a kick out of that thing. I mean, it just sits in here with tension. How many of those get lost? It's ridiculous. But seat's in pretty good shape, you know, it might crack and splinter if we sit on it, I don't know. It's got 13,000 13, miles on it. So, pretty excited to get this one going. I think Seth's going to mess with it tomorrow and see if we can, uh, I don't know, unseize the engine or if it is seized, we don't know. And then as far as some other stuff, um, I know I've talked about this Triumph. I think it is a trophy 500 like a 72 that's this paper i got and uh, i'm pretty excited it's not locked up or anything and it also looks very complete so far it looks like it's missing the coils but really good looking bike i've always wanted to triumph just to try one out but the 
carbs aren't even seized up or anything. Again, very complete bike. So just missing a few bits here and there. I'm hoping this one will be a runner without too much trouble. You know, we'll see. This guy over here is so weird. I know I mentioned last night that it was a uh, Norton. Still have no idea what kind of Norton it is. So if any bits of this look familiar, let me know. I know zero things about, I know one thing about Norton, that's how to spell Norton. But because horrendous, like fish looking tank on there and uh, or they painted it to look like a fish. So this is like a, a lure in the water, I don't know. But it's got some big old extended forks, has a Harley drop center rim laced to the original hub. It has a 19 up front. I don't know if that's the original rim, but the hub is cool. Definitely extended forks. And yeah, I put a little bit of force on the kickstart. It doesn't seem like it wants to move, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna go crazy on it. So we're just, we'll mess with it at some point. The CB450 here is actually in really good shape. Uh, it's just, just consider it having dust on it. I think what this thing was, it was somebody's build in progress. I think they had just painted the tank. It, it hasn't even been used up here. That was a bag I think used to mask it off. So I don't think this thing's had fuel in that tank and uh, it's not locked up or anything. It's got like brand new, you know, like some aftermarket turn signals, a little Mako light on the back, which looks good. Seats in great shape. It's got stock pipes. I'm actually gonna put those on my 450. You know, a little cafe bar. So this thing's pretty sweet. It's going to a buddy. He messaged me like a day before I got this. and was like, hey, I'm looking for a 300 to 500 CC bike I can build a tracker out of. Here you go. This is a BMW R100 slash five, which is really cool. This whole thing is wadded up. The wheel, I don't know if you guys can tell, it's kicked that way. The swing arm is bent, actually tweaked right there. And then the front end is kicked over too. So it's got some lesters on it. It's got some cool wheels. Um, carbs are there, all the cylinders. Like, I mean, it's, it's really complete otherwise. Just been in a bad wreck. So this one's also going to a friend uh, here locally. So these two will be gone pretty quick. And then do we have any others in here? Uh, I, don't I don't think so. I don't think so. We did a count last night. We actually have 30 motorcycles. There's 30 in here. Yes. There's 30 in this building. And then between us, we have 50 bikes. Probably. Could be more. Give or take. Most likely give. Um, yeah, it's, that's a lot. So anyway, that's what's going on. Pretty good haul overall that rhymed. This is me talking at a normal level behind the camera. The old one was 108. Oh, that was my drill bit on top. <laughs> the old one was 108. There ain't no way. I don't know, man. I mean, the other one was like more ear piercing, so to speak, like it's more intense. This one has such volume. I mean, I don't know. So this setup is pretty darn amazing. Just testing it out right now. Whole different machine, so we'll try this next.
Now, of course, we have a ton of projects, and I know you guys are always worried that uh, I'm not going to be getting stuff done. So these, I, Seth's going to hold me to this, they're not going to go ahead of anything in line, right? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Okay. Yeah. But realistically, though, two of those bikes are going away. The Triumph, you know, I would love to make that maybe like a, a winter project. Just take like a couple days and just tinker with it maybe get it going or something like that but it's not a priority there's plenty of other stuff to work on we're working on builds right now we're working on revivals the only thing that might will get pushed ahead will be this uh, little honda dream i think tomorrow just for fun i'm going to put seth on this and you're going to see if you can uh, start the process of maybe get it going what are you what are your thoughts on it so far i think it's cool i think it'll be a pretty fun zippy little bike to go get going yeah. I don't think it'll be horrifically bad. I don't want to jinx it though. Yeah. But, you know, we'll find out tomorrow just because, uh, I don't know, I'm too curious about this thing. But don't worry, we're not putting it ahead of really anything else. The VMAX is, um, we're just waiting on parts basically. So we've got a new regulator rectifier for it and uh, just going to hopefully fix a charging issue that we're having. We have a back tire to go on it. I don't know what happened. And then cross your fingers, guys. Yeah, cross your fingers. In the last video of the VMAX, I said that I was looking for a four to one exhaust and uh, I might or I might not have one being shipped to me. So more on that as we go, but cross your fingers that, uh, that it's actually a real deal and we receive a Kirker four to one for this thing because it definitely needs it. So yeah, anyway, lots of stuff going on in the shop. Let me know what you guys think about the uh, about those eight bikes. I think we did pretty damn good. Seth is working on what? Selling a couple of yours? Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, I don't really have any major plans for them as far as actually keeping them and using them. I'm probably just going to part them out most likely. But it depends on what I can get my hands on. Yeah, I mean, I, I will ask. We can put, put it to the community. Maybe if they have any 919 parts or DRZ parts, whatever. We'll see what you guys got. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It would be cool to hear that 919 run. I'm thinking out of the two, that's the one I'd like to get going. Like the 919 literally just needs like a fuel tank and a sending unit. Yeah. And it would potentially run. Yeah, it was actually like looking at the chassis and stuff, it's actually really complete and relatively clean. We did put, uh, we did jumper the uh, starter solenoid and you know, it cranks over fine. Yeah. But you just have to go a little bit further getting power through the ignition switch. I so. actually got all that working. So, you got all that working. Yeah. Just it, needs fuel. Fuel and maybe an ignition switch, because I think those early 2000s Hondas have some kind of mobilizer chip in them. Oh. I think that's why it's not kicking on the igniters. Okay. So. Well, now we know. Yeah. Well, maybe now. So, yeah. Anyway, look for more updates on all the stuff, I should say. Hopefully, we'll make some progress on these things before too long. But anyway, hope you guys like this one and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.